Hello everyone, in the last video we introduced membrane brown proteins to help us investigate how proteins within the membrane assist in cellular transport. Yet throughout this video, let's take a more in-depth approach with analyzing the types of proteins we see associated within the membrane and how they interact with the chemical environment of the lipid bilayer. So let's set the ground for why we need to discuss membrane proteins in detail. We have been analyzing the lipids we see incorporated in the membrane and how they vary in structure, but in the scale of biochemical relative performance, we could refer to lipids forming the bilayer as providing the necessary structure in which the membrane-associated machinery uses to perform their function for the cell, meaning the majority of reactions coming from the lipid membrane are from the protein receptors, channels, phosphatases and dozens of classes of complexes working on or through the bilayer. This is not to say that lipids are not important in influencing biochemical pathways, but the activities of membrane proteins is what gives the cell membrane and organelle bilayers their biochemical output capabilities. And just like how we saw that throughout the cell there are varying concentrations of lipid types depending on certain requirements, we can also analyze varying protein compositions of membranes throughout different locations in the cell. For example, the plasma membrane has roughly 50% composition of proteins and lipids within the membrane, whereas the energy production organelles such as a chloroplast or mitochondria has a drastic increase because of their demand, having protein compositions around 75% on their surface. Just as we mentioned previously, there's dozens of different classes of membrane interacting proteins. But let's begin our investigation with describing two of the broad classifying terms of membrane proteins, integral and peripheral. Analyzing how they interact with the lipid bilayer we have been studying. Before we continue, let's analyze something that's very crucial to this topic. The different building blocks of lipids and proteins are built of. Lipids, as we have seen, are built from the fatty acid extending tails and ranging hydrophilic molecular head groups, such as glycerol, having that amphiphatic nature. Proteins are also amphiphatic, yet they are built from the ranging amino acid residues linked together through peptide bonds, creating a polypeptide polymer. The specific sequence of the 20 different natural amino acids gives the protein its specific function and properties through ranging folding patterns and internal interactions. In order to incorporate or interact with the lipid bilayer, the intermolecular interactions have to be compatible between the protein and the lipids. So for integral membrane proteins, this class of proteins transverse through the entire lipid bilayer, allowing for communication or interactions from both sides of the membrane. Yet in order to cross the membrane, the specific sequence of amino acids within the hydrophobic region of the bilayer favors sequences of amino acids with hydrophobic R groups such as glycine, alanine, valine, and a handful of others minimizing repulsive forces as the protein crosses the membrane. Yet, in the region of the protein that is exposed to the solvent, hydrophilic R group containing amino acid residues are exposed on the surface of the protein, shielding any hydrophobic residues. Integral proteins have a range of structural components, with some having more than one domain transversing through the bilayer, taking roughly around 20 amino acids to cross the bilayer. These complexes are the only type of proteins that can interact with the environment on both sides of the bilayer. Where, on the other hand, peripheral membrane proteins do not protrude through the membrane at all, and only have weak associations with the polar head groups of the surface lipids on either side of the membrane. We can find peripheral proteins either associated with the head groups or even interacting with already existing integral proteins. Changing the interactions of integral and peripheral proteins have with their membrane actually are seen in the difficulty to remove them from the bilayer they associate with, where peripheral proteins can easily be removed simply by changing salt concentrations or pH. Integral proteins are so tightly associated with the lipid bilayer that even if they were removed, they will still be interacting with a segment of adjacent lipids. The only way to remove them is through strong agents that strictly compete with their specific interactions. I hope this investigation into integral and peripheral proteins was helpful. In the description below, there's additional readings 
and resources that I used to create the graphics and information throughout this video if you want to do some more research on the topic. Also, all the infographics you saw throughout this video are for free download if you're interested in re-watching and writing your own notes and studying along. In the next video, we're going to investigate alpha helical structures and beta barrels, talking more about the proteins that we see in the lipid membrane. I hope you guys have a great day.